Motors and welcome back to the self made auto channel. Got yeah, a Prius, it's got some brake problems. Oh, she looks a little crusty in there. got the cable out of the actuator there on the back of the parking brake. I don't believe that my parking brake release tool is going to be big enough for this cable. No, it's not. We're going to have to find a different way to release those little fingers there. Give her another two. See if we can just rotate it a little bit first here. Ah, crap, it's all aluminum. That means all dust. I'll just try to scrape some of this off. Oh, this is not gonna end well, fella. Make sure the calipers came with that new bracket. And they did. Easily solvable problem. using your noodle. Look at that. Our cable is now out. Of course you can't see it. Now you can. So our cable is out. We saved the little fingers on it. A couple little beauty marks in the flange of the you know cable, but not a not a huge deal. We'll have to see how oh, guys gonna say see if we can rotate them little fingers. And they do. Oops, got my glove pinched. Should be able to reuse these cables. The cable still works, so should be good. Oh close. The banjo bolt, which we've already learned about, and a lot of commenters mentioned, it's the banjo bolt because it goes through the banjo. Last time we played the bolt like a banjo, however, this is the banjo. According to Wikipedia, I guess. Now that is the aluminum ceiling washers. We'll save those just in case it did not come with new ones. Is that dripping? It is. So we'll do what we always do. Watch this. Everybody cover your eyes. <gasps> He's gonna pinch the hose. I love how the viewers freak out about that. Because for some reason, they don't like pinching the hose. So we'll stick that to the side. Now we will take and pull the caliper off. Hopefully they are friendly. Sometimes they are not and they're wanting to snap off in the bracket, which is no big deal if they do, but they're usually a fine thread bolt and I don't have any here. So we're gonna to try to be ginger with them. Meet ginger.
I lied. These ones aren't flying thread, are they? No, oh, they are. They're one, two, fives. Come on, out of there. There you go. Get up in there, Ginger. Oh, man. It's not going to fit, is she? Oh, she did. There we go. Still have a little bit of pad left on the inside. Some new calipers here. Warning soft aluminium casting, do not cross her over tightening. Avoids warranty. Spin in calipers, you got to make sure that one of the notches is facing up. So, towards the top, it's going to be that one there or towards the bottom, whichever, because we've got the pin in the back of our inside pad that needs to line up in that notch perfectly. See what I'm saying? So it's got to sit in there when we're all done. I believe both pads have the notch. Yes, both pads do have the notch. One with the squealers going on the inside. We will make sure that they lubed the pin sufficiently. Which in this case it did. Sometimes these reman ones, you never know. I've taken them out before and they've been right full of rust and dirt and grime and sandblast and compound. So I always just double check. So move it behind the hardware as we always do. It's getting kind of monotonous at this point, isn't it? See, I've got the hardware that came with our pads here. 
we will install it. There's that. Slip on our inside pad. Slip on our outside pads. Now these also have anti-drag clips with them. These little fellas here that go in between the pads, there's little holes up top. Sometimes these are a pain to put brakes in, depending on how much tension they have. They, you know, they always want to kick, kick your pads back out. These ones aren't under an extreme amount of tension. So get that one lined up in there. Like so. So that's what it will look like once you have it all assembled. and put a little lube on the face of the piston and on the ears there we go leave it upside down and sometimes you gotta oops squeeze the pads in just a little bit which we will Put a little bit of tension on them that'll hold your clips in set it down reinstall the bolts reach in we'll spread the pads apart a little torque at the spec what's that smell what smell I don't know, probably smells like something out here. Oh, here we're spraying copious amounts of brake cleaner. Speaking of smells, you smell. I think maybe it's the combination. You got like a combination. You didn't let me smell. finish, I was oh. just going to compliment you. Never mind. You don't want to compliment me? I said, speaking of smells, you smell pretty good. <laughs> and not like popcorn. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. So we're going to take this rubber off and use this rubber that comes with the OEM one. Only because it looks cooler. Let's see if we can get it off. No other reason really. It does have heavy amounts of corrosion under it, so I just think it looks cooler. So we're gonna use that once we're done bleeding. Install, just start the bolts by hand and then torque them to factory spec. We got new ceiling washers and a new banjo. Well, banjo bolt. Make sure you don't have any crud sitting on the ceiling surface. Probably ought to. Be on the safe side, you know me. All right, Mrs. O. Mr. Safety. Safety third. We'll get that started. Now these are aluminium. Get that started. And then we can remove our hose pinch pliers. The most debated topic on the YouTube. Don't worry though, take a chance, you know? I've been taking chances for 38 years. It's gotten me three kids, but never a collapsed brake hose. Now, theoretically, we should have new cables. However, the parking brakes only get used once a year for state inspection, oddly enough. You get the rare bird that uses them once in a while, like myself. Come on. I always use my parking brake. The majority of folks do not, however. So we'll stick that back in there. And the reason I say it should have new ones is because the finger retainer, this is all aluminum, and the whole edge that holds it in is, is bad. However, it does have spring tension that holds the whole cable up in. So it's not going anywhere. It will still work. So, no worries. 
take and crack the bleeders loose. Let them gravity bleed. We'll make sure the brake fluid's full. Take the cap off the reservoir and just let it go until they drip. Then we can pump up the brakes, let the pistons come out, and then finish bleeding them. So we'll get this side bled. These things make a mess. Okay, just hold down on the pedal just a little bit. Just turn the pump on. Okay. Yeah, you can let up. Let the hose this off with some of the good stuff. These are super easy to bleed because a little electric pump kicks on. It's like the old forerunners and stuff. All right. Thanks, Mrs. O. You're you did good. I'm gonna fill that bleeder cap full of the fluid film and stick that on there. Hopefully keep that from corroding. Don't forget to complete step two, which is reinstalling the tire and make sure your brake fluid is full and then take it for a two. There's the right one. Oh, Mrs. O. Oh, hi, Trinity. Are you feeling any better? No? Still got a little fever? You're in triage right now? Over on the cot? Here you go, Mrs. O. I got you. You want to let us out? We got to go for a two. Sure. Everybody's in here sleeping. When do we get our nap? I want to take a nap. For nap real. Nap? All right, let's go. Chip, chop, chip. Here we go. Like a little backup beeper. <laughs> Let's see. A little mini shifter. I oh, get it us. We're in good shape. It's like driving a little spaceship. Oh, the confusion. Two people to stop sign at once. Nobody knows what to do. Ever. Everybody's waving at everybody. That, folks, is that rear pads, rotors, and calipers on the back of your Toyota Prius. Pretty easy job, uh, like most. Um, nothing really much to say about it. So we'll leave it at that. Go down, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment if you like. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, and a thumbs down if you didn't. Be sure and tell us why, though. We appreciate that. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.